I probably did a terrible job, but whatever. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy it. Tetsuo signing out. Welcome to Room 7, created by SPAG. SPAG, a veteran of PWHL, and all-around nice guy gives us an all-around nice map to add to the room's compilation. Although not as grand in scope as some of the other entries, few maps I have come across share the precision of design and careful work that have gone into this, which looks very subtle and unassuming at first glance. Closer inspection reveals impeccable brushwork and superb use of the old HL textures, for starters. Low lighting and spikes give a great contrast in the room, giving an eerie atmospheric effect, which leaves you looking around boxes and corners for something to jump out at you. Hitting the lights which will toggle some bright fluorescent sand sprites, which give you a 180 degree turnaround to a normal, everyday maintenance bay. Probably my favorite thing about this map is that it is packed with small detailed brushwork which most mappers seem to shy away from and focus more on texturing. The rushing water slash turbine sound that bleeds in from the adjoining hallway was not intended to be in this map. SPAG however did not mention it nor complain, so I left it in as I think it fits okay with this theme. My only complaints would be the overuse of crates in the lower portion, and to SPAG personally for not mapping more, as I truly enjoy his work. Welcome to number 8 for Rooms Half-Life, the Marble Fountain by Nefarious. Upon entering this room, you are thrust into a grand cathedral setting, filled with nicely decorated windows, pillars, Greek-style temple structures, and more. Everything is done very nicely, if not a bit blocky in parts, and the room itself is very large and a bit squarish for my tastes. Texturing is also a bit bland and repetitive in my opinion, but it is adequate for the theme I guess. However, the centerpiece of the map more than makes up for the minor distractions, an enormous marble fountain located at the map center. The fountain itself is an amazing and rather neat entity set up made entirely out of brushwork that aims to recreate the, the fountain streams. While not the most perfect way to go about visually representing liquid water, it still comes off amazingly and is the most uniquely designed fountain I've ever seen in Half-Life. There are other weird slash neat elements to this map that you will surely find if you explore around a little. TJB, the author of this room, four, based on the control room of the Tantive IV in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Basically, I wanted to do a Star Wars room, so I turned on Battlefront 2, started a battle with no AI units, found an interesting looking area, and mapped away. I picked Tantive IV because it has some interesting, curved architecture, but when built it isn't too system intensive. I tried to copy the Tantive for exactly, so the lighting is a tad bland, and those computer mainframes up on the stage looking thing are a bit blocky, but if I get a chance to replace them later on, I will. I'm sorry about the lack of ambient noise. I can't think of a proper excuse, so I'll ask you to think about this. In space, no one can hear you scream. Just imagine that the ambient noise, for whatever reason, is screaming. Lots and lots of screaming and the level is set in space. So that's why you can't hear it. And considering what the ambience is, aren't you glad now that you can't hear it?
Welcome to the 10th room in the series. By Muslim Flash, aka Mighty Atom. Atom, one of the messing elite of GWHL, does not disappoint us in quality, nor skill with his room's entry. One of the largest and most detailed maps in the series. He aims to please and delivers with a superbly designed map. Brushwork is impeccable, as well texturing, which is done very carefully to the point of perfection, not to mention making great use of the original textures. Muzz, er, uh, Atom's entry, also is one of the few maps to try reproducing the Black Mesa theme, and he does so seamlessly, whilst improving the mapping quality of the original design as many times fold. Use of sounds and some entity effects gives us nice atmosphere, making everything more real slash immersive. Atom's original map is, was even bigger with some more surprises added, but were removed I think, due to size constraints and performance issues. Explore around a bit, you are sure to find new things, even playing it multiple times, as it's packed with copious detail, and all around mapping goodness. A warm welcome to the 11th room in the Copper Rad Court by Zibaji. Zibot, another of the more talented and creative members of TWHL, produces for us an amazing work. This gigantic map is superbly slash meticulously designed to give a completely original theme, though it sort of makes me feel like I'm inside a Metroid map, knowing Zibo's affinity for the franchise. Avery sounds make the already dark and scary map that much darker and scarier. To boot, Ziba was one of the only entrants to create his own, unique hallway for his map. Brush work is varied and highly detailed, if not very poorly optimized as this map was a nightmare to integrate into the room series, because there simply was not enough map resources for the connecting hallway from the previous map. Subsequently, I spent a lot of time nulling slash removing redundant brushwork and unfortunately scaling the textures up from the original, all just to get it to compile. You can download the original Radcar from TWHL to see the map in its originally intended form. Another great thing about this entry is Zipa included his own uniquely designed iris doors into the map, which add a lot to the wow factor as well to the Metroid theme in my opinion. Of all the maps in the series it would be very, very difficult to definitively choose a favorite out of the bunch, but I can definitely say Zipa's Radcar would be very close to the top. Hey there everybody, Worldcrafter here with my audio commentary. The theme for this room is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. I actually had three other maps in progress with a similar theme, but they all fell through the floor shortly after I started. Uh, for this map, I used the Asylum Texture Pack by Schwinz and some textures from Rumpel's well-known Afraid of Monsters mod. Uh, you can find the Asylum Pack on the Wadfather, its thumbnail is a green door. It's a fantastic pack for making maps like this, I'd highly recommend it. Alright, so what may be obvious the most first is the Silent Hill influence.